like a Lucid Reviews logo? If you do, then you might want to buy a t-shirt with the channel's logo. Just head to geekygoodies.com slash reviews and grab a t-shirt for yourself or your friends. By buying Pure Reviews t-shirts, you are supporting the channel, and I'm thankful for that. And don't forget that you can also support the channel through Patreon. Just head to patreon.com slash reviews and choose the reward level that suits you best. Your support means a lot. With enough support, this channel will continue providing you with the content and you will be able to contribute to that as well. Thank you to everyone who watches and supports the channel. Hello there folks, today we are taking a look at the game called Pioneer Days. It's published by Tasty Minstrel Games and the designers are Chris Marling and Matthew Dunstan. Now in this game you are traveling along the Oregon Trail and you are with your wagon and your townsfolk and then your cows and such and you are visiting different towns to give goods to the people and get favors from them and you are also encountering some disasters on the roads and then you need to repair stuff and uh, get a lot of medicine and such so it's basically a dice drafting game with lots of going on but a rather streamlined game let's take a look at how it works so Pioneer Days is played over the course of four rounds, four weeks, and there is there's five days in each week, basically. That's how the game works. So five big turns of all like that. So here we have our pioneers, and you can play the standard side. Um, so or you can play the advanced side where each pioneer has its own special ability and a, a variety of like Variety of different starting resources, so it can be different from the other player. But say so you're gonna play a standard side for a moment. So the standard pioneers have one of your townsfolk is immune to disease. Disease is one of the disasters, and one of the townsfolk will be immune to that. And what we get at the beginning, we get a large wagon, which is this one right here. So this is the large wagon with six spaces on here. We'll get this one. Then we get also one wood, one medicine, one cow, and three money. So the free money. We'll go separately and the cows are also separately then don't, don't go in a wagon but the wood the items and uh, the the medicine will go into the wagon and you can hold those are the small tokens so you can hold up to two of them in one space for example like that right now i have i have to put them here so i still have space in my wagon right here. So, and the starting player will take the dice. If you're playing, let's say, if you're playing the um, uh, three-player game, then uh, you take four dice out. Uh, if you we're playing the four-player game, five dice out. So basically, plus one die each time. So let's say we're gonna play a uh, let's say we're gonna play a three-player game. So I take out four dice. So now there are five different colors of dice. Um, as you can see here, a yellow, green red, blue, and black. And all those dice have those different symbols on them, as you can see. The symbols are basically the same on each die. And those symbols are here as well. Those are basically the actions. So the first player will roll those dice. And then he will put those dice uh, based on what are the symbols. So this one goes here, so this one goes here, and here, and here. So now, starting with the first player, this is a dice drafting game. So starting with the first player, each player will take a die. Now when you take a die, you can choose to use that die's um, special ability basically, or you can hire a townsfolk, which will give you a special ability in, on its own, and will give you points at the end of the game if, you, if he will still be on your side with you. Or you can take the money. So here it's $1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 dollars. So you can just take the money. You just pick a die and you choose one of the three options that you want to do. So when you uh, recruit a townsfolk, you get it for free. You don't, have, you don't have to pay anything for that townsfolk. But then if uh, the disease will come up, then you have to pay um, the medicine for, for them. And they might be discarded because you don't have enough medicine. So that's that. Or you can take three dollars here, for example, or take an equipment. Down. So what, what are those different actions? So first of all, this is the Joker. Joker means that you can basically take one of the other five actions. Then this one here means that you can take 
a gold nugget here. This will be the points at the end of the game. So you secretly take one gold nugget, but you must store it in your wagon here. So right now I got lucky, I got two points. There's one to three points that you can get. So basically you go mining, you get nuggets. Here you, you can get an equipment. And with the equipment, you get an equipment, you also store it in your wagon. And those equipments have special abilities or some like bonuses to your side right here. So for example, with this, one of your townsfolk is immune to disease. With Lantern, draw one additional gold token to choose from. With this one, you get plus one wood. Whenever you get wood, you get plus one wood. Uh, so, and such. So th those are different items that you want to collect, like small special abilities, bonuses that boost your actions. So here, with this one, you get a cow. Uh, with this one, you can get a wood. And with this one, you get uh, medicine and you need medicine in order to protect your townsfolk. You need wood in order to protect your, your uh, carriage, uh, your, your wagon. And yeah, you, you need also those um, cows. You need to score points also at the end of each round. And uh, you go through that, you're drafting those dice, the three player games. So you draft this one and this one and this one. The last die that will be left will go towards the disaster track. So if it's the green die that is left, it will increase the disaster of disease. And that will go there. Then the next player becomes the first player. He will draw those dice from here. He or she will draw the dice from here. Roll them, place them on the right sides and such. So, and you'll do the same. You, you, you do all that stuff. You draft dice. Uh, you do the action or take the money or take the townsfolk. And the, the thing about this one is that those disaster tracks will increase eventually. And if one of those rows uh, will go to the end, then the disaster will happen. And there might be a chance that uh, mo like no, more than one of those will go to the end at once. Why? Because there is no, as you can see, there is no uh, black here. But there's a black die, which means with black die, if the black die is the last one left on the track, then all those will go up by one. Like that. So, when disasters happen, for example, the storm happens, I must pay one wood for each wagon. So I have one wagon right here, I must pay one wood for that one. If I cannot, then I take this token right here. And this minus two points, I'll put it here. So I had a wrecked uh, wagon right here, so I have less space here. Uh, on my turn, I, 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 by the way, I can buy uh, new wagons. I can buy a small wagon, which is the other side of this large wagon. Small wagon for five and big wagon for eight dollars. And you do that. So with, uh, sorry, with, with the raid here, you must lose half of your silver rounded up. So the raid came, you must uh, lose your money. And those disasters will come up. You, you cannot do anything like at some point they will. Famine, you must pay one silver for each cattle, so you must pay for your cows here. Otherwise, they will die. And then disease, you must pay one medicine for each townsfolk that you have in front of you. Otherwise, they will die. And that's basically how the disasters work. And on your turn, yes, you, you get the dice, you draft those dice, and uh, at some point you will start. So, at the end of the week, at the end of the whole round, where all the dice from the bag are gone, uh, you will go to the end of the week, you will, you will kind of get to the town and you will visit the town. And there are those things right here, which is basically the extra points. And there are requirements on those cards. Let's say one wood and four silver. If I give one wood and four silver and each player can do that, then I get two favor. What is favor? So basically, as you can see, one favor are those tokens right here. And each favor, you don't have to store them in the, in the wagon, by the way. Each favor is two points. So if I get two favor, I get two of those. It's, uh, it's four points already. And those are basically the bonuses. When you visit the town, you, you will, can fulfill them. Each player can fulfill them in order to get uh, a lot of extra points. Also, at the end of the week, you will get points uh, based on the cows. So each cow will give you uh, one point if you still have some left. And then you will put the dice back and do the new rounds. 
and at the end of the fourth round, the, the thing is that at the end of the fourth round, every disaster uh, will level up one once, and then you will see if something happens, and then you will count points. So, this is the whole game. Let's take a look at some of those pioneers first, what they can do. So, for example, this is the Michelle the Tinkerer. Before triggering, triggering equipment, you may change your die to the face of your choice. If you do, you must choose income for your turn action. So, uh, I didn't tell you that you can pay three gold, you can, sorry, three silver, you can keep, pay three money in order to choose uh, the face of a die. So, so the die was here, let's say, you want to... You want to get it here, for example, you pay three silver and then you change the face of the die to whatever you want. Put it there and do that action or do whatever else you want. Maybe you wanted to put it to medicine, but instead just get six silver, something like that, you know. That, that's the thing. And uh, here, here what it says is that before triggering equipment, also, when you have the equipment, I didn't tell you that as well, is that... You have those small icons right here of those uh, dice uh, faces. So this is the wood face here. Um, what that means is that if you have this equipment in front of you, I'm sorry, I didn't tell that's plus one wood when you get the wood. So the thing is that if it's in front of you and I get this die right here, I get one wood as a bonus because I have an axe. And those are all the different ones. So this, this gamble, for example, it says I get plus two silver. Uh, so, but whenever I get gold, I get plus two silver. But with this one, I can also... Uh, this this, this, this uh, item triggers when I get uh, the uh, gold mining. So if I do the gold mining action and I have this item in front of me, I also get two money. That's really easy. So that's how it goes. Uh, then let's say what we have else here. We have ZBD the Patriarch. Each of your wagon spaces can hold three wood medicine in any combination. Wow, that's cool. One equipment or two gold tokens. What? Wow, that's that's really cool. But I, I didn't. Basically, each time I play, I play with new folks. I try not to play with special abilities that much. So once I played with special ability, but I haven't seen all of them. You may freely trade wood or, for medicine or medicine for wood. When you, whenever you draw gold tokens, draw one more token, then discard any one gold token. So you can basically choose more, the Jake, the Prospector, and so on. There are so many different ones. And then there are those tones folk I want to talk about. So as you can see, they have those small, maybe you can see, they have those small letters right here. Each time, if it will zoom in, uh, each time you uh, begin the game, you will choose two of the sets. So there are sets A, B, C, D and E and you can vary them. So you can do A and D, you can do B and C, you can do A and B, whatever. E and D, C and D, whatever. And then they all have those special abilities and, and uh, points at the end of the game. One point per townsfolk. If you have the fewest townsfolk, take another townsfolk of your choice. Some, some actions are immediate. Uh, some actions uh, are ongoing. You may discard the cattle to change the die to any face before triggering equipment. That's really cool. So some have kind of a trigger when, when it triggers. So for example, this one triggers at the end of the each week, gain one medicine for every three cattle you have, work leader. And it gives you one victory point per cattle at the end of the game if you're still with you. For each wood you gain, also gain one silver. Uh, draw one gold, this is immediate effect. Draw one gold token from the back for every two favors you have. Choose one to keep and return the rest. That's really cool. So, and you have all those different ones. So you choose two of the letters. Let's say I'm gonna choose A and C. I will shuffle two of those decks and I will play with those. And that's basically the whole game. And whoever has the most points in the, end of the game from the favors, from just collecting points from the cattle and from the townsfolk will be declared the winner of the game. So <laughs> what to tell about Pioneer Days? Um, there's a lot to talk about. So first of all, um, I really like quite a few TMG titles. Uh, there is Kings of Heaven's team, the Scoville, Gold West, and all those 
and the pioneer days as well all those um, games have something in common and this is like they are streamlined they are the perfect midweight euros and with this one it's the same the, the same feeling um, and what to tell is that um, I played this game with an I would say non-gamer because she was struggling with someone does duo as well and she had like maybe trouble to understand how to play the game but eventually she got it and I played this with her as well, which should be more, much more than Simon Does Duel, the base game. And then she she got this game and she she did well and she understood the concepts. Maybe like the first few turns she was like, what to do, maybe a little bit busy for her. But eventually, I think the, this is the pro of the game. This is This is something... This is telling something good about the game, that this game is kind of accessible, although it is a mid-weight Euro game, and it's great for gamers as well. So, but um, through that, I mean, if we go, uh, let's go back to the components and artwork, as I always start with those, but I wanted to do an introduction into that. So, um, components and artwork. Um, the art is, is really, really cool. I like this kind of uh, art style. Uh, the components and everything, it's evocative, it's, it's beautiful, it's really cool, the dice, the, the engraved dice, and then we have all those boards and custom, those cows and um, the, the wagons, and then you put those items and wagons, everything is thought through. It's great components, TMG, as always. I don't know, it's just the production quality is just really, really cool, and that ups the game for me. The art is cool, that ups the game for me. This is part of the enjoyment of board games, of everything like it's not only the gameplay and the mechanics that I enjoy I enjoy to look at the game I enjoy uh, taking picture of the game when it looks beautiful so that's that's the thing so and uh, so the production wise great if we go into the gameplay um, so first of all dice drafting I'm not in a dice drafting fan but I like it in some instances and here it's really really cool uh, so you look at those dice and when you draft them you can take them as a special action but basically as an action or you can get the townsfolk beneath that die or you can get the money because you really need the money on that turn and, and this option is on those different uh, uh, different columns right there and sometimes you need to get a specific townsfolk that you really want but there is no die under it so you cannot take it but then what you can do you can pay three silver in order to change the face value and then claim that townsfolk with that die or take a lot of money or whatever and you can do you can mitigate the luck of that but basically the luck is not for you when you roll the dice like you roll the dice and that's that are your actions here you roll the dice and these are the available dice in center of the table for everyone to choose from everyone in this is in the same position so randomness i don't care about that there's for me it's not the randomness uh it just you know, the element that spices up the game. So not all the options will be always available to you, but you can kind of mitigate it so all the options are kind of available to you. So that's that. So the dice drafting is really cool. And the last die will contribute towards the disasters. And that's where you can also influence that as well. Because when you when you take the, let's say, you have choices of two dice and maybe you take one or the other die, but let, the, the thing is that players kind of can choose what disaster track will go up a level. They kind of can, because this is the last die that will be left. That color will go one level up. And usually all the players try to work together so no black dice will be left. But if you're, you look at your board, you're like, I'm quite safe. So I don't care about you. I will leave that black die over there. You will get all the disasters and I'll be fine. I'll just discard the resources. I will pay uh, for the disasters. I'll be fine. You can screw over your opponents a little bit with that. And that's cool. But usually, you know, the disasters happen to everyone. So you usually don't have enough resources or, or you will have to give away the last of your resources in order to, you know, survive the disaster. And then when you visit the town, you don't have enough of those in order to give them for favor uh, tokens so you can get more and more points. That's that. Uh, also, uh, there are those items that uh, give you bonuses. They spice up you. And I like that you have the limited space and, and you can buy as many wagons as you want. But they cost like the large wagons cost $8 and that's much. And uh, 
you but you still you, you get those wagons but the more you get the more you have to pay more townsfolk when the disaster happens you need to pay more medicine if you get more wagons you need to pay more wood you get more cattle you need to pay more money if the disasters happen so the more you get the higher possibility that you cannot pay for that if the disaster happens and that's extremely cool about the game that's what i like but those items they give you kind of that bonus so so instead of just getting the die and getting one of those three options you sometimes get a small bonus and that small bonus can be a big difference on your turn that can like i i i see that there will be that um a storm disaster coming up and i need to pay wood for my carriages for my wagons and oh i can get this wood from that bonus over here and i will get it and my turn is perfect now you know that's that the satisfaction level of that you need to puzzle out and one more thing i want to talk about and i talk about much because i do really like the game uh one more thing is that there are those um townsfolk and you have a b c d e you have those five different decks and how you mix and match them makes the variability makes the replayability of the game really really cool although you, you are kind of doing the same things but because the dice you take out and roll the, the colors it changes kind of changes from game to game from round to round so it kind of varies so you have those different situations although it's the same thing but the different situations you need to deal with during that round during that game and with the townsfolk, you have those different townsfolk. Some give you some immediate abilities, some give you ongoing, some give you at the end of the week abilities and such. So uh, though a big variety of those townsfolk will spice up the game. And depending on how you mix and match them, they have very different abilities. Those, those decks are different and they make up of a kind of a different game because the townsfolk are the ones who give you a lot of points if you manage them well and you give, they give you great bonuses they give you ongoing abilities and such so i really like that part of the game and you can spice up the game by playing not the standard pioneers but playing the the advanced pioneers so you have your own special ability and then you also have your own starting resource i mean like everyone has the same starting resource with the standard and with the advanced you have different starting resources maybe you will start with a small wagon but you get more resources and those games will be different as well. There's so much variability in this game. This game scales well. It plays well with two. Uh, you just draft a different amount of dice. You have a different amount of dice in your back. It plays well with three, with four. Um, even with it, with four, it takes a little bit longer. But on your turn, I mean, you don't have too many choices. It's basically draft the die. But how you use that die? Use it for that or that or that. But usually... On your turn you kind of uh, like when it's not your turn you kind of can come up with your turn and then uh, if your die is taken maybe you have alternative to that your turn that you came up with while it was not your turn I mean like that's what I wanted to say but <laughs> anyway um, I definitely recommend this it's uh, Matthew Dunstan and Chris Marling I definitely recommend this game uh, it's a really really cool game um, this game, I, I need to play it more and maybe it will become even higher. Right now I'm talking about this game, I'm getting so excited about this game. This game will get a silver virtual medal, which is, a bit, uh, and I would say it's between 8 and 9 out of 10. So really high, in my opinion. So this is Pioneer Days, a uh, very lovely game, highly recommend it. Take a look at this, buy this one. I think it has flown a little bit under the radar, so definitely give the people to look at maybe my review or any other review. We need to talk about this game more. That's Pioneer Days. Thank you for watching. We'll see you another time. Bye bye. This channel is sponsored by Osprey Games. Check them out at ospreypublishing.com.